Vanilla pot de creme. It's a fabulous Valentine's Day dessert. What is vanilla pot de creme? What does pot de creme mean? Well, I think you can guess that it means vanilla cream pot. What is it really? It's kind of like a creme brulee without the brulee, sort of. It's very, very simple. And then we're just going to cook it in these little pots. This is a pot de creme pot. It has little lions on it. It's by a company called P. Vite, which is copied all over the world. And you can actually buy these in, in many, many places. But the traditional thing has these, okay? The little lions. But basically, you can make them in teacups if you want. You can make them in anything you want. You can make them in advance. You can serve them cold or warm. I wouldn't serve it hot, but you can serve it sort of like warmish room temperature or cold. So, vanilla pot de creme. Let's get going. We're just gonna use four eggs, yolks, only the yolks. Now, unlike egg whites, egg yolks, you can be a little less like super precise because if you're whip whipping egg whites, it has to be really pure egg whites. Egg yolks, there can be a little white in it. It's okay. So I'm just gonna crack these. Now, um, I am throwing away the white, which in fact, I probably shouldn't, but we're gonna do that. My queen of New York, Dr. Ellen Gendler, is my dermo for 26, 27 years or some crazy thing. Um, and she took four things off my face. I'm telling you this because I want you to go to the dermatologist at least once a year. I've had numerous skin cancers, okay? All fine because of Ellen. She took four things off and one was an in situ squamous. Don't mess around, go to the dermo, okay? So in situ, what does that mean? Well, first of all, it's the other three most important syllables in the world. The first ones being, I love you, and the second ones being in situ, meaning in place and asleep. So that's what you want them to take off you. Because after in situ comes stage one, which you don't want. So go to the dermatologist, especially if you're over 50 guys, okay? Four, okay. So four egg yolks. Whisk these up in a bowl till they're homogenized. Okay, that's four egg yolks. This is a third of a cup of sugar. So I'm just incorporating those two things. And then, you know, we're just gonna make a custard, meaning I'm just going to heat up some milk and cream and then slowly mix these together, thicken it, and make pot de creme. So they want you to use a cup of each. I'm gonna use a little bit more cream than milk. Okay, this is two cups of milk and cream. Now you may wonder, what is that noise like a distant freight train? It's uh, the water boiling. Because just like in chocolate pots, we're gonna cook these pots in a water bath. I'm just telling you, it's a good idea to have the water boiling in advance to pour in your pan with your pots. They want you to use uh, vanilla seeds from a vanilla bean, which is totally great, but I'm going to use our usual magic item, which is vanilla bean paste. As you know, this is a paste with the seeds present, so you can see the seeds. Mmm, vanilla i I'm just gonna pour some in here. Remember, it's vanilla pot de creme, so you want it to be pretty vanilla -y. And I'm also gonna put in a few little seeds from here, and I'm gonna use this, which is Tahitian vanilla from Nissan Massey. What's the difference? Tahitian vanilla is more um, flowery. It has a floral aroma. I'm just gonna whisk this a little bit together. And I'm gonna let this milk get pretty hot. I'm almost gonna scald the milk, almost. And this is a little easier than a custard because it's gonna thicken in the oven, not in under your watchful gaze. It's gonna do it in the oven. So you don't have to do all this like, meh, 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 slowly temper and all this stuff. You're gonna let this cool after it's gotten very hot and then you're just gonna mix in the egg mixture and pour it into the cups. It's, it's simpler. I'm just gonna put a little salt in here also, which just makes it kind of delectable. I turned off the boiling water because it was really boiling and it's hot enough. It's hot enough to overstuff. What is that? Tough enough to overstuff. What is that? Tough enough to overstuff.
Name a company that still has a straight up jingle and doesn't use a famous person's song like the unbelievably horrifying appropriation of Elton John, not to mention Queen being used. I mean, puke inducement. However, there, Daisy has a jingle. Just a dollop of Daisy. It has an actual jingle. Jingles are the bomb. People who still use jingles, I just love them. Visiting like who? Angels. What? Visiting angels. Visiting angels, America's choice in home care. Get behind companies that have a jingle writer. It's really, really cool. The golden age was probably the 70s, 70s and 80s. I'm just gonna whisk this a little bit to kind of help cool it off. Just like if you're making an ice cream base or a custard, you don't want to pour boiling hot milk into eggs unless you temper it, which we could do, um, because it'll scramble the eggs, as you know, because you're a dinner partier. Before I mix this cream into the eggs, I want to take a minute to tell you guys, under no circumstances should you miss watching the masterpiece of Netflix, Pretend It's a City. That's all I'm going to say. It's Fran Lebowitz, the great humorist and writer, filmed and interviewed by Martin Scorsese. I'm gonna slightly temper this because for the sake of filming, we didn't let this cool down completely, but it's fine. It's, it'll be fine. So I'm just gonna do a little bit. Tempering. 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 Do you realize that I make this much noise when I'm completely alone? like 24 seven. I'm gonna let this sit for five minutes, which you're not gonna see. And then we're gonna just wipe the foam off the top. It just makes your pot of creme have a flat top. You don't have to do that. Chefs do this. They wait five minutes and then they, you know, they scrape the foam off like that. Do, do we really care? Well, if it's Valentine's Day and the boy or the girl is there, you might not wanna have, you know, foam on your pot de creme. Remember, you can make this a day in advance or more. Oh, it's so close. So these, these don't rise, you know what I mean? So fill these as high as you want your dessert to be. This makes a lot of pâte de creme. Hello, you've never seen me down here. This is my second oven. We're using it for a reason that you'll see in another episode. <laughs> um, anyways, this oven is set at around 340, but you could really do 330. I wouldn't do 350. Okay, I'm gonna open it and I'm gonna pull out the rack like this, not so far that it drops. I'm taking my pan and carefully setting it here. Word to the wise, do not put the hot water in before you set the tray down. I'm gonna pour enough water, I'm gonna probably pour all this water in for it to come halfway up the pot de creme. Okay, now I'm gonna put a piece of tin foil over the top, just gently like that. I'm gonna close it and I'm gonna cook it for approximately 50 minutes? Doesn't seem right. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna cook it until when you shake it, it's pretty set, but it still jiggles slightly, sort of like a panna cotta, okay? Like it, you want it to move a little bit. Then you take them out, remove them from the water and cool them. I'm thinking in those little tiny pots, 50 minutes is too long, but we'll set the timer for 40. Okay, I set it for 40. Still seems too long, but anyways, pot de creme. Everybody likes them. All right, so here's the pots. They're ready, I've cooled them. These are very good right now. You can put them in the fridge. Now, what I was looking for is that. See that jiggle? My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. That's the shake you want. You want some movement. So these are our beautiful pot de creme. Some of them got a little brown on top, that's okay. Now you can serve these just like this. You can serve them with a little cookie 
You can also just serve them like this with a little bit of whipped cream, or you can just serve them like this. One of the nice things you can do is to serve it with um, a little bit of macerated fruit. Fruit just cut up with a little bit of lemon, sugar, and uh, amaretto or whatever you'd like and left for a little bit. But you can go back to 8,000 episodes and look how to make macerated fruit. Anyways, vanilla pot de creme. I mean, I don't know, can you beat that? Oh, the texture is so gorgeous, look at that. Perfection Incorporated. Your vanilla pot de creme shake brings all the boys to the yard. They say it's better than yas. Is that the rhyme? Okay. Tambouring, tambouring, bumba da 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 da